Hey y'all, it's Lissa again. I wanted to thank you for coming back. Today I'm going to be speed coloring. I don't really color this fast. Uh, I'm going to be coloring Starry Bunny from Lily of the Valley. I'm going to be coloring fur. I do have to admit something to you. This is the first time that I have ever colored fur and actually liked the way it came out. First, you're going to see my shadow map. Really quick view of it. Now I'm going to go in, not even worrying about fur, and I'm going to lay in with my lightest color where I want my shadows to be before I commit to the darker color. Once you put down the darker color, there's pretty much no going back. So I want to make sure that I actually like them, even though I have the shadow map. And y'all know me, I like my layers, so I am going to go over this image multiple, multiple times, still not even worrying about texture or making fur, just trying to get those shadows laid in. The texture will later add in, but for right now, I just want to make sure I get my shadows and highlights right, which more than likely they're not actually right, but I like the way they look, so that's how we do those. I think I'm on my second layer of color. Y'all know I like my layers. And I am just trying to get the contrast and all this stuff right. And there I have finally decided that I like that contrast, that shadow there. Now I'm taking my darkest color and I'm going around and I'm adding little flicks on the edges to make the rabbit appear more fluffy, I guess. The more flicks you have on the edges, the fluffier your rabbit will appear. Now I'm doing a technique that my friend Lou taught me. Hi Lou! And uh, she does like the best fur you have ever seen and I have always wanted to do fur like this and one day she just said just scribble and I'm I'm a perfectionist it can't be that easy so she actually did a little video for me and all she did was scribble so that's what I did I took each of my colors in the areas where they're supposed to be so for the shadow area I put the darkest and I just scribbled little lines in there and then I took my next darkest color and scribbled little lines in there in that area and kind of overlapped them so they would blend out a little bit and then went all the way down to my lightest color so that way I could add just a little bit of texture but it looks good but it's not good enough y'all know me perfectionist doesn't mean I do everything perfect, just means I feel everything I should do should be perfect, and it never will be, so I'll beat myself up trying. So, now I've moved on to the ear. Still not fuzzy enough. I'm not happy with the texture yet. I will be later. I love how this image came out in the end. But first, I figure, okay, do all the fur. If we're going to do all the fur, then we can add texture all at the same time. So, I am going in and coloring each little section. If I were to color this image again, I would actually start at the furthest back part of the image. So I would start with the back ear and work my way forward in the image because every time I go over the side or over the edge of something, I lose the fuzziness because the color I lay down to create the shadows blends out the the texture I have just spent minutes adding in. So I would do this from front to back or from back to front so that way the layers on the front would have the fuzziness. So for instance here I'm working on the paw of the rabbit and now I'm doing the leg that is behind the foot and behind the arm. That would essentially be in the very back of the image, so I would do that first. Because right now, as I'm going over it, I'm losing all the texture I just put into that arm that was overlaying the leg. And you still want that. You don't want it to look like where the parts meet is smooth. If you want texture, you want texture all over. So. I would have done it differently. I 
would do it differently and I probably will do it again because I love this image and then um, now I'm doing the foot the reason I'm going around the center part as well is I want to make it look like I guess some of those stuffed animals that they have the the pad is pushed in but then it's its own little bubbly thing and so therefore it's gonna have its own highlight but it, it's like pushed up into the into the paw and I like that kind of thing I love stuffed animals so I look at them all the time just so I can see how to color them and have never been able to color one the way I wanted to but I have actually sped this video up six times it shows you how long it took me to color this little rabbit uh, I really really like how it came out I like how the card came out uh, for right now I am only doing the coloring of the card later on I actually just ordered my Mother's Day present which is going to be a video camera to sit above my workstation so I can take so it's easier for me to do videos of making cards that's like the hardest part for me y'all know that so I don't know how well those will be and usually they might just be following sketches I don't know but maybe I'll try to do it and it'll get me to go faster I'm hoping so anyway okay I'm still on that other front paw I want it to be I want it to appear more in the front so the things behind it are going to be darker and the things that are highlighted are going to be in the front closer to the light so that's the way that I see shadows and that's the way that I see depth but that's not always true there's exceptions to every rule so I'm not going to go into that one right now but I'm on the last little foot of him her actually this is a little girl there's no identifying marks but it's for a baby girl card so it has to be a girl bunny and I'm going in and adding my texture I still am not liking the texture and I'm feeling the whole image is too dark I actually tried to keep this light I have a very heavy hand whenever it comes to Copics I it may be because whenever I started out I started out using paper tray ink paper which was very absorbent and I needed to use a lot of ink in order to get any blending so once I switched over to another one I can saturate a paper real quick now I'm starting on the little bear in her paws and you just saw me lay down my colorless blender this is something I learned in the Copics for card makers class from online card classes really good class I always take classes whenever I find them I feel you can never stop learning there's always something new to learn and I learned a lot from this class uh, number one was if you put down your colorless blender as your base coat it's going to keep the overall color lighter and now I'm taking my lightest color and picking it up using the tip to tip method with my colorless blender so that way I can create an even lighter color and keep that part of the bear overall light and once again I'm gonna go in with that darkest color at the end so I can create that extra contrast that I want because I like contrast I guess I never used to like it but now I really like it and so I'm just gonna color the whole bear this way and going back to the f closer is lighter and further is darker um, the chest that is shown of the little bear in between the paws is going to be darker because it is behind the paws it's hidden and so it's going to be just a little bit darker and that's one thing that I've been going over lately is uh, whenever you have your shadows not all of your shadows have to be your darkest color there are shadows of different varying degrees so there may still be a shadow but it may not be your darkest color it may be your medium color 
and then you have your lightest color as the highlight still. It's just you don't have to have that darkest color as your shadow all the time because not all shadows are the same, I guess, depth. Um, yes, I guess I'm rambling. Uh, not all shadows are the same depth. Uh, you'll see some that are lighter than others and some that are darker than others. The further you go in, the darker your shadow is. Like if you're looking into a forest, the further you go back, it's darker because it has even less light. Okay, now I have gone to coloring the inside of the ears and the, the paws, the bottom, the foot paws, I guess, of the rabbit. And um, I wanted to keep this light as well. And I wanted to use these really pretty soft pinks. I just love these pinks, but I couldn't find something to shadow them with. So I picked up one of my W markers and I'm using that as a shadow to go over it because it slightly darkens the darkest the darkest pink marker that I already have and then I'll go through and I'll shade it out and then I will use my colorless blender over the end and it does take away some of that but it is still there just enough so you can see it and I'm sure there's probably ways to do this easier but y'all know me I have to take the most difficult way of doing everything so one day we'll figure out why and now I'm going to do the other part the other paw and same exact way I wanted it to look like it was popping out a little bit and I'm adding back fuzzies because I noticed that as I went through I didn't have any I lost them all one of the other ways to add texture is to take a rag with a lot of pile um, and then wet it with your colorless blender and pat off some of the excess. You don't want it really wet, but you want it to where it's just leaving little dots. And as you pat it on your image, the colorless blender is going to take away um, or push away the color. And so then not only do you have your darkest color for your shadows and stuff, but you also get an even lighter color than your lightest marker. I really hope I'm making sense because you have lightened your lightest marker a bit and so you get all of these even more different colors and you haven't even had to use the markers for them but you also get this amazing texture. I decided I didn't want to do the eyes in black. I wanted to keep it soft so I went for a gray multi-liner to do the eyes on both the rabbit and the bear and now I'm doing the same pinks I did for the ears and the feet but I am using darker grays because as the floor is further under the rabbit it's going to be darker and then I'm going to pull it out with the lighter colors and I don't care that it's smooth or not because generally you figure if he's she's sitting on a carpet it's not going to be smooth so and then plus I kind of want the rabbit to be the main focus but here I'm going around I decided that I like the floor I like the rabbit but the rabbit kind of blends into the background and I don't want that so I'm taking one of my W markers and I am going around the edges and by making little flicks in, I'm keeping the flicks that I made with the brown to come out. So I'm not losing my texture on the outside and actually I'm enhancing it because now each one has a little highlight and a and a shadow and this kind of pushes the rabbit from the wall visually. So this is one of the things that I really liked about it. I just started doing it and really liked it and for the final image I kept it all white the top background except for this little part that I'm doing here uh, I did not record coloring the outer circle or uh, shadowing around the stars 
because I was playing around, didn't like what I did, had to cut out the inner circle, played around some more, liked what I did. This is the final thing, and so then I pasted the inner circle on top of it. The stars are actually using Mama Elephant dies. Then everything is in the description box. I wanted to say thank you for watching and coming back. If you have any needs for more information, you can also see the final card on my blog. Please be sure to like and subscribe, and have a good day.